How you feel about that? Praise up. Yeah? My mother make it better, though. Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew, and this is Chew It Up, a show where we talk identity over food from the guest cultural background. Each episode, I'll sit down with your favorite artist, and we'll share traditional and exotic dishes from that artist's background. Check it out now. Hey, everybody. Andrew Santiago here. We're here on Chew It Up, a show about finding and exploring identity through food. My first guest, a walking catalog of hits, Mr. Wale. Wale, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it, though. You're so multi hyphenate right? You're like a poet, you're like a rapper, you're like a sneak enthusiast. Three jobs. You, you just work it, man. Mm -hmm. I know you got BGM, yep. that's out. Mm -hmm. I know you got On Chill, mm -hmm. two fire singles. Mm -hmm. Usually, if an uh, artist is dropping singles, yeah. maybe there's like an album coming Absolutely. or something. Absolutely, very, very soon. Okay. Sooner than you think. Thank I know you're Nigerian, you know? so we got some Nigerian dishes for you to try out for lunch today. As you know, we're here to explore uh, culinary dishes, get nostalgic, talk about growing up uh, all through food. Are you ready for the first dish? You have food. 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 First up is Moin Moin. Besides being a really cool word to say, it's a savory cake made of black-eyed peas, and I thought it'd be a great dish to start with. Do you know this dish? Are you yeah, familiar with it? my mother used to cook this. Oh, so it's something yeah. you grew up with. Tell me a little bit about it. You gotta like soak the beans for like a long time and put them in the blender, and okay. you put it in like uh, aluminum, aluminum. <laughs> aluminum. <laughs> That's what my mother would say. Yeah. Uh, you put it in aluminum foil, and then like one by the bean. Cool. So a lot of times they put a boiled egg and, or fish in there. Mm. Like Corned beef or something like that, yeah. Is that like a surprise? Yeah. You find it in the middle, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. got it's you. Get yep. some fish, go. Yep. Man, that's nice. The consistency, the flavor, it's really unexpected. I think the word bean pies those people it, would yeah. tell you off. Like, but yeah. I didn't realize it was made out of beans until I got older. Mm. Your family's Nigerian, right? You were born in D.C. Yep. So you, this is something you ate growing up. Is this like a thing you would like ask for? Like, ma, we gotta have this. So you didn't really ask my mother to make nothing. Like, okay. Just, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't. I hear that. I wish. You know what I'm saying, but we just made. We had to eat what she made. That's she right. Was, she was making them. Did your mother do the thing that my mother did when you were like, "What's for dinner?" She'd be like, "Food. <laughs> yeah. Sit down and eat mm -hmm. it." Yeah, that's one of those times. Yeah. yeah. But and this happened with a lot of my family members. Like, we got older. We started wanting the foods that we were eating growing up. I guess when I eat it, I kind of, you know, reminisce. I talk a lot about, like, struggle meals, right? Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, um, there wasn't always, like, nice stuff to eat for me. So I would, like, just... A struggle meal is, like, when you grab whatever's in the fridge, you sort of throw it together. Eggs, What was, man. like, a, eggs? Eggs, dog. Yeah. Eggs and rice. Eggs and rice. <laughs> yes. Eggs gonna taste like whatever you put on mm -hmm. top of it. Food and Right. You just said all three of the, the best ingredients. Bon appetit. How you feel about that? Pretty good. Yeah. My mother make it better though. We gotta ask some more questions. How supportive um, was your family when you wanted to be like an entertainer? First of all, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, That's it's funny. over with. It's over with. They not trying to hear nothing about your ambition or your goals. She wasn't faced by no record deal mm -hmm. or no single or no awards or nothing. It took a while. Yeah. Did, did seeing you like perform change something? I think my mother probably only seen me perform like twice. Really? Yeah. How meaningful is that for you when she does see you? Though? I mean, it was weird. But <laughs> yeah. It was weird. That's probably her texting me now. She's been talking about it. But she know. I mean, she's proud, but. Of course. It's, it's probably, it's just, right. it's, we, got, we got cultural differences. Right. It's like mm -hmm. sometimes family don't know how to talk about stuff that yeah. artists are doing. Yeah. Let me take you back a little bit. Your first big hit, that first big check comes in. Mm -hmm. You want to celebrate. What'd you do with your family? Well, my father, car. Again, that's one of the things that yeah. make it easier for them to understand. Like, okay, right. this is a sustainable These are career. the things that come yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How's the food, though? It's good. Good. It's good. Yeah, I like it, too. The rice was a little undercooked. But for your taste? For my taste. Okay. Yeah, like a little, like more, a little, a little softer? softer. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into this. This is a good uh, yard vibes, right? How's that? I'm fighting with the food. Small. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth yeah. it. Would highly recommend. What's great? Nine out of ten. Mm. So, what are the advantages you think of like having immigrant parents growing up? In the I US? mean, work ethic. Well, my mother and father like they work tirelessly for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I know is work now. Mm -hmm. When I'm not working, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with myself. Right. Idle time, I don't even know what that means. Go to school, stay at work, you sleep. Everybody's you know busy. Like, you never really kick it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you're as young as you are and as prolific as you are. Mm -hmm. I am prolific, though. You are, though. The, the hard cam, though? That, I'm prolific. Prolific? 
Shout out to the immigrant parents, the immigrant communities. Yes, we love Bringing that, that. hard love work, that, that ethic. We love that. That's right. So if you were gonna tell uh, folks one thing about like Nigerian culture or like Nigerian American culture. I just think we the flyers. We have the flyers weddings. Ooh. We got the flyers tribal gear. Mm. We got the most talented athletes. Wow. Everybody should feel like that about the culture. That's right. And I think the world is finally starting to get hip. Like, yeah. like the emergence of Afrobeat. The Afrobeat, yeah. speak about that. Mm -hmm. We had uh, King Sunny the day, we had fell out. But now it's like, Commercial. They've evolved a lot in Nigeria as far as like, you know, the perception of Nigeria is just like, it's too, too trapped out too, right. you know what I'm saying? It's got as good and as bad. But it's got, it's got tourism popping now, yeah, there's really music happening, there's a whole beautiful. scene, it's a and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And why, the food. You know, why you not planning your next trip to Nigeria right Let now? Let me take you to Nigeria. <laughs> Wale, take you and your family and your Shoot. loved ones to Nigeria. Hey, you've heard it here, folks. Plan your next trip to Nigeria. So this dish right here, we're not gonna touch, we're just gonna get the aesthetic off because I know what it tastes like. Okay, this is Ogbono soup with a mala. It's an abomination. My mother made it one day, hated it, never tried it again. Boom, or like what if you taste it one day? It's never like, gonna happen. Oh, snap. Never gonna, I could, uh, nope. You just steadfast. Go goodbye. Bye, Bye Mala. <laughs> Good to see you again, enjoy. I think there's okra in there, John, I think. All right. Oh, bro, let me, I don't, get that, oh, wait, that's an abomination, I don't like it. I don't mind it that much. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You heard it here, folks. Don't don't you ever serve this to Wale. Never. Not never. Do better, love yourself. Cool, so what's the like most like exotic thing you've ever had? Like I've had like escargot, or oh, like frog legs. Okay. all right. You know, I, I try things. I How about you? you? Sushi, exotic sushi, the junk that be looking like like toys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Like them, them little crazy things. I had those before. I felt like I was doing something big at that time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's the most uh, expensive thing you've ever eaten? Crustaceans. Crustaceans? Crustaceans, fool. We going tonight. We couldn't let Wale leave without talking about Mambo Sauce, a DC staple that makes everything taste better. That chicken naked. That joint is naked. If I was anything other than African, it would sound crazy, but an African definitely made these. You know this for certain. Because it needs to be, they need to throw this into the Ugbono soup mm, and let it sit there. Like, this joint is the most naked chicken. Throughout the nature of like, yo, baby chicken, chicken you're, alive, you're, you're alive still. Come hang out with my deer. Uh, this cool. is totally not how you're supposed to eat it, but you know this chicken is naked. So Just go crazy, so like this, this, like uh, this. There it is, there's a mambo sauce. So see your path. Tell me a little bit about mambo sauce. We can put it on anything, burger, mm. chicken. Mm. Some people like to drizzle it on their rice. Right now, I mean the sponge, and it tastes alright because you got a little mambo sauce. You could, you could sprinkle mambo sauce yeah. on a sponge. I'm eating a brick. And it would taste. As good as this chicken. Does. I think I chipped the tooth. I'm really like having a thing right here. Mama really should run for president. They got the same complexion as the current president. Tell me a little bit about growing up in Washington, D.C. Damn, you know, I don't want to get all deep on you. Know, no, you don't have to. I mean, Mama Sauce is taking me there. Yeah. And, um, it was weird because, you know, mm. you always want to, when you were a kid, you always want to fit in. And it's like, bomb. Nigerian. Mother picked me up from school. Mm. With the whole <laughs> tribal native gear, yes. everybody making fun. You know that, that wasn't it was it was a different experience back then being Nigerian. Yeah. A lot of people didn't see the beauty in the culture. And then we moved to Maryland, mm -hmm. and we was, had to live in a like a super low income joint. Like you know, kids could be mean. I will say, growing up in D.C., Maryland, and then going to a, a two HBCUs and one. Super duper, I don't know what you call the white coat schools, but I guess the schools. <laughs> <laughs> Private little arts. Yeah, like uh, sort of and it just gave me a good balance of yeah. like the world that I live in right now. You're all spoken about gentrification in DC. Why is it important to maintain culture in those neighborhoods? Like I that's mean, happening in Brooklyn. Because if we too. don't if we don't if we don't preserve the culture, the world would just be one flat plain every everybody would be wearing the same thing, doing right. the same thing. Right. There would be Monotony, you have to have different colors on your palette. The world needs juxtaposition. That's beautifully said. I'm a rapper. I'm yeah, a, I mean, of course, I'm an that. artist. Four dishes, ain't a chicken wing, mambo sauce, franken dish. I had a great time talking to you, Wale. Thank you. Uh, check out My this My palate man's. is pleased. Yeah, that's right, we please his palate Thank here you. on Chew It Up. I'm Andrew Santiago. Make sure to check out those singles right now. BGM, on, on chill, on BGM, chill. everything. The album will be out shortly, man. Thank you for supporting. Follow me on Instagram. Black Planet, Facebook, and iTunes. You heard it here. Chew it up. See you next time. Hey!